so in my book, Strangers in Paradise, it's the story of Kachu and Francine and um, those two uh, kind of finding their finding each other in life and uh, struggling to hang on and and build a relationship together. So um, these two have really been the bedrock of my career um, in cartooning and comics and all that. They show up in all my work. So um, it's not uncommon for people that ask me for uh, commissions to ask for Francine and Kachu doing something together. And Kachu is artistic in the story, a painter, and she paints these very large, uh, beautiful paintings of her muse, Francine. Other things too, but mostly Francine. And the commission request was for a moment in the studio where Francine is posing for Kachu. She would never do this for anyone else. And um, just kind of having a moment. So Kachu is one of my main characters in my graphic novels, comic book series and graphic novels, Strangers in Paradise. Um, and the love of her life, Francine Peters. So it's pretty common for people to ask me to do drawings, commissions, and that's what this request was. Can you have Kachu and Francine having a moment in the studio? The studio being Kachu's art studio. She's a painter. She paints these massive, um, big, impressive paintings. In the series, there's a gallery opening and a lot of funny stuff happens at the gallery. Francine would never pose for anyone but Kachu. You understand that. So this is a very private moment between these two. And um, the request was, you know, can you give us that moment before or after the painting when um, they're just kind of exchange looks? So I'm going to pull the covers off and let you see this for real. And I hope that it's okay with YouTube. <laughs> um, here. So... There's a close-up of where I ended up with on Kachu's face. And a, a little necklace that she's worn many times over the years. This is clearly um, in a very high stylized, um, and, it, and really what I'm pulling from there is Patrick Nagel, the illustrator who was popular uh, quite a while back. And he did a very clean style on the on hair and things like that um yeah and i wanted that to contrast between the stylized artistic thing versus reality which is in reality her hair is a sweaty mess um that's beautiful but this is charming to me so this is what i think is beautiful um and after that it's just all textures I did the entire thing with, of course, my trusty uh, 0.5 mechanical pencil, just because it's so comfortable and that's my main tool. I'm able to get a lot of line weight and uh, um, light and dark pressure with the pencil. And then the polishing off on um, things like this, the broader strokes, that's coming from just a wood pencil, the Faber-Castell 2B. And that's really all you need. Um, I know there's there's a, a lot of mid-tone in here without um, a lot of stark, black, dark contrasting. Uh, I could go for that, but um, I was really happy with the mid-tone uh, range here. I tried to imply a little bit of light source and a little bit of shading, but I really didn't want to get carried away with it because next thing you know, you're painting with the pencil, and I'm not qualified to do that. I see line, I don't see light. Um, and that's why in my book, I work in black and white and very clean. So I see line, I don't see light like a painter. If I had to paint that, I could, you know, it would look amateurish, I think, the way I would handle the mid-tones and the grads and um, all the little spots in between. So, yeah. Um, okay, so... The thing about this one was I drew this and then showed it to 
my friend who had asked for it. And he said, eh, it doesn't quite capture the mood. It's beautiful, yes. But that's not the moment I'm looking for. The moment I'm looking for between these two is a little bit more romantic. So, okay. I did it again. And immediately you can see a difference between the expressions. Upbeat, happy, let's, you want to have some lunch? <laughs> Versus, whoa, wait a minute. Hmm. <laughs> let's, I, I'm looking right at you. I'm looking right at you. And that's all I'm thinking about. That was the focus that I think we were looking for. And you don't know if the towel, the drape is coming on or off. You don't know if that shirt is coming on or off. So pulling away the uh, protection here. Here it is. This is a completely different drawing, isn't it? Uh, if you compare the two side by side. <clears throat> um, he, this has um, been seen before, this particular pose. It really was in the gallery opening scene of Strangers in Paradise. Um, what could you had her opening in gallery? Somewhere around Strangers in Paradise in 64, 5, 6, somewhere in there is when she had the gallery opening. This was a prominent painting. But my friend thought, you know, that's... That's not exactly the painting I was looking for. Something more romantic again. So I even changed the painting. And this painting again, guess who? <laughs> yes, thank you, Jeffrey Catherine Jones. Yes, I, I went back to my original muse um, from when I was a teenager and just kind of did an idle uh, Jeffrey Catherine Jones pose here. I struggled with how am I going to illustrate that with black ink? because I don't have anything to paint with. I'm not doing tones. All I did was, this is just black ink and brushes. What are you gonna, how are you gonna get a sheer cloth? So on this cloth, the challenge here was, clearly you can see that I used pens and brushes here. Um, how do you get that? Well, I did it with a 0.005. And I just you worked quickly with the line. If you go too slow, it, you'll get a full line. If you go quickly, you get a scratch line. So I used that to the, as a trick. And I did the scratch lines like that. And then I actually even uh, pulled out a little knife and to see if I could click counter sideways and get those little gauze squares. But it didn't really work out so well. Um, I did take a brush of white out and help with some of my white out right in there. You can see it. But the rest of it is just using this super, super fine pen line and just like that. Um, brush and then pen down here too. But going slower and getting the full line. And the floor. And just doing the graining, all you have to do is stare at wood for a little bit and you'll be able to draw it for the rest of your life. Um, both the wood on the easel, um, the thicker, um, with the thicker width on it, and then the finer lines on the pine floor. That's it. That's how I did these two. When um, I first did the blacks on here, um, you could see a little bit of gray from where they're, you know, they're sp spread on like that. And then you could kind of see through it. So I did, got it again and I went over and did a second coat. Now, how did I get that rich, deep, rich black right there? With vintage Pelican ink. And this particular bottle comes from Kristoff. And uh, I've been using this bottle all year. You can see through it. Um, the ink is probably down to about there. This bottle is probably 40 years old or something. Um, the new Pelican ink is watered down. I know that there are super rich blacks that are available from the Japanese market. I'm not aware of any uh, that are in the American market, but now you can buy Japanese art supplies easily online. So um, 
and I may even have a bottle of Japanese uh, Super Black somewhere, but um, this is what I've been using for now. This is what got me through 2023. So thank you, Christoph. Thank you. Um, and that's it. If you're interested, um, if you don't know anything about my books and you just found this channel by accident and saw Naked Ladies, um, please be aware that they have a story and their story is in a series called Strangers in Paradise. And you can read how they meet and struggle with friendship and then um, love. I think it was a fantastic way to spend um, my life drawing these characters that I love so much. There's a lot of story here. So, yeah. Changers in Paradise, check it out.